Wonderful Friday evening, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Friday Night Live with me, your host, the Prince of Paranormal, Eugene Tay. Jonathan is on his way home right now from, I guess it was a gathering or work, or work gathering. So he'll join us very shortly. But with me right now in the Prince's Den, in my studio, is Murali. Guru Murali, welcome to Special Confessions. Thank you, Eugene. Hello everyone. So we knew each other. I checked the date. Our very <laughs> first <laughs> confession with you uh -huh. was on second of May, two thousand nineteen. That's when the video released. Okay. So we probably met before that. Yes. How time flies. Really. <laughs> five years. Five years. Five. five Nineteen years? to twenty-four now. Twenty. Yes. Yeah. Five years. So many of us on Supernatural Confessions have heard of you. We have seen the poster about the Pancha Kosha. And I think behind the scenes, uh, we have been working on some cases as well. Yes. I think today, what we want to have on this very special episode is to get to know you, hear some of these confessions straight from the horse's mouth. No narration today. Murali will be telling us the stories that he experienced uh, for most of his life. If you have seen some of the videos, we have uh, talked about a case from uh, Trinidad. We have also talked about a case uh, about a black magic that was attached to a girl. Mm. But since then, till now, I'm sure we have a lot more stories. And we're going to find it out from Murali today. And for those of you who are at home watching us, this is the live episode. So, <coughs> guess what? You get to ask questions and we will try our best to answer you. Now, of course, I'm controlling this. I'm talking to Murali mm -hmm. and I might miss some of the questions that you have. So if you would like me to read your questions for sure, well, what you can do is click on the dollar sign option right below where the comment button is. A colored box will pop up. Put in any amount of money you want. Uh, all blessings will go a very long way to helping us keep this show running and we will see your questions and we will ask Murali. Also, if you have 
you're just feeling generous and you feel that today's episode is worth more than a movie ticket that you could enjoy out there but you choose to watch us instead well uh, feel free to click on the dollar sign as well and put in any amount you want although the timing for today's show is slated for one and a half hour 19 minutes every Friday night live mm. we may just go overboard <laughs> it depends yes. it depends okay so as I said Jonathan will be back very shortly with us right now he's on his way home and once he's back home I'll patch him in but for now, let us thank some very, very important people. Week after week, month after month, they're here to support Supernatural Confessions. And you can support us too if you're interested in this. This is where our Patreons, uh, Supernatural Confessions Patreons go to. They put in a monthly amount. And as I said, it keeps this show and whole of Supernatural Confessions going. So thank you very much to our Patreons. You made this show possible. Big props out to Sentient, Sentient Entities, Elaine Chua, Tengku Alsatian, who was also the first to be logging in today and leaving a comment on the live chat session. We have Emco Grimm, ZP Matt, Queen Lai, Lim Tek Chuan, Elvin Sensei, VL, Casey Chan, Alexa O, Janice, Jacqueline, Yong Kuan Yu, Hanje, Jerwin, Dato Easy, Starving Jack, Hot Water Bottle, and Sharon Ng. You have all my love and gratitude. Also, not forgetting, Wandering Spirits. We have Joel Go, Deborah Confield, Jia King To, Linda Hayden, LEX, Jess New, Jerry Fish, BB Teo, Tay Hak Wee, Two Cents, Alvin Lim, Kenny Polaris, Giant T, TTB, Juju Bay, ZP, Davindes, Gary Fu, Isaac Lam, Martin, Don, Ed, Yao Xiu, Jay, Karina, Yanni, and two new names this week, Giver Chang and Shi Kai Chong. You have my love as well, Wandering Spirits. Last, we have Restless Souls, Su Chia To, Grace Chai, Candy Chia, Ron K, Jack Ong, Nicholas Poa, Buck, Serin Tan, Rachel Y, Kelvin C, Lechmi, Julian Teo, David, Kabilan, and Koshka, new name this week. If you want me to read out your names and go out of breath week after week, well, you know where to go to, <laughs> patreon.com, Supernatural Confessions. You have my thanks, gratitude, and lots of love. Okay. Now, to keep the show going, ladies and gentlemen, once again, welcome to Friday Night Live with me, Murali, myself, Eugene Tate. Jonathan is on the way back. We want to talk about dark rituals today. We're going to talk about black magic. We're going to talk about stuff that you don't, or rather you read about it, but perhaps now with Murali in the hot seat beside me, he can answer all these questions directly. Okay? But let us take a look first. I have this surprise for you, Murali. Okay. It's our very first video. Yes. Do you remember how we did it? Uh, can you give our audience some background story about it? The first video was done at the uh, Chinese temple. Mm-hmm. Uh, where you came and uh, did an interview with me first. Mm. And then uh, I think on that same day, we had a fire ritual where we had a number of cases of cleansing and, um, and uh, stuff. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think, I think that's what I remember. Sure. And do you remember who was the girl that we interviewed? Uh, mm-hmm. Let's see if I forgot her name. <laughs> it's, been, it's been some time. Right? Yes, it's been some time. <laughs> okay, let us take a look at this video of Murali's very first featured confession right here on Supernatural Confessions. Um, supernatural phenomena, hair strands coming out of nowhere, um, seeing red eyeballs when you shut your eyes and such things. On some days, I'm able to see it flying around as well, around me, and it's not in my house. It's wherever I go, this comes with me. Hair strands, like energy-wise, just like floating around in the air sometimes. In the sky, I see black dots, worms, I heard voices, so many voices, so I started to believe that I'm talking to everyone telepathically and that's how I'm hearing the voices. But it turned out that it was just me being completely possessed by someone and him sort of channeling everything into me and making me lose my mind. I really want to lose my mind. Is there anyone here? What did you find? You are listening to Supernatural Confessions. My name is uh, Murali. I'm a spiritual practitioner. In my culture, the Vedic culture, the Hinduism culture, we are known as people who are seekers. Seekers of truth. Seekers of light. 
along that way, uh, we were taught into certain ceremonial, certain rituals to help people. The invocation of uh, Shiva's energy, while chanting Om Namah Shivaya, that energy itself will invoke certain form of energy into the body to bring it into that higher level of uh, spiritual presence. You can see this shrine that we have is uh, dedicated to Ganesha. And uh, this Ganesha is very special because it's known as a Dishti Ganesha. Someone who removes uh, Dishti, evil eye, black magic, negativity stuff. And if you see on his hand, on his left hand, you see he's holding fire. Usually Ganesha, they will hold a sweet or pot, kind of luck kind of a thing. But this Ganesha is very unique. He holds a fire. In uh, tribal traditions, whatever not, you will always see a fire. It's very sacred. It's always respected. In our culture, in Hindu culture, we have understood the Vedic science of how we invoke fire and chanting of mantras. In this process, we chant certain mantras to invoke certain energies. So the start of the fire process, we will chant the uh, Gayatri mantra, the balancing of cosmic energy that will be in line with the fire ceremony that we have, followed by the uh, planetarial energy, the nine planets, the seven planets and the two solar waves. We call it the Navagargas followed by the 27 oscillation of stars that is roaming around the earth. So these are the things that is actually a magnetic force that earth has. When chanting certain mantras that is associated with all these things, we are able to balance the fire energy together with the cosmic energy itself. So the particular mantra that we chant, we are able to transmit that energy into a Ganesha energy to absorb a negativity from a person's body. So when we place the Ganesha's mass over the head and when we chant, it's like the aura energy is protected. Not so long back, um, I felt really sick, uh, mentally especially. I started moving towards progress with the help of doctors and this and that, but they can only cure these things to a certain limit. The essence of it does not lie in medicine, it lies in much something much deeper, much more. There was um, a lot of black magic involved in that, which um, sort of made my mental state really bad. I suffered a lot because of that. My family suffered a lot because of that. I had to leave college. I was in the UK before this. Had to leave my course, come back to India and stay with my family for eight months. I wasn't allowed to meet anyone, see anyone. That's how bad my state was. I was, I was screaming on the bed, not willing to go to the asylum. My dad trying to put clothes on me, dragging me out, screaming, shouting, fighting the world in my head. It's very dark. I met her some time ago and uh, she was sharing with me that uh, she's having some uh, bad experience with negative energy, seeing a lot of uh, dirty things in her dreams and uh, her physicality is not proper, she's not healthy, she's always feeling weak and uh, she's seeing some eyes following her and she starts to scream and stuff. I told her to come today and uh, what we did was process of locking into nine points using the black string, chanting of Karl Bhairav Mantra. So this mantra actually helps us to lock the body energy into one space itself so we are able to remove it. We will advise the devotee to bring uh, a cloth. They have to wrap it all over their body because their body silhouette have to touch the cloth itself and the strain of their hair. Yeah. Even if someone is going to do black magic or something, these are the basic requirement, they need someone, something of the person. So in the removing process is also the same. We have to, we need that to remove this type of negativity from a person's body. The very first advice if someone comes to me to say I'm affected by black magic, I will ask them to seek medical advice first. Until the doctor is certified that nothing is wrong with you, you are perfectly fine and you are still going through it, then there is a possibility. It could not be just black magic, but sometimes it could be just your imagination is running wild. Because black magic, people who are affected by this black heart have certain symptoms, usually like a dream, or they have marks in their body, restlessness, cold sweat. And sometimes during our ceremonial process, people who are affected by black magic, naturally these uh, entities will start to come out of their body. Because of the invocation of fire so strong, that negative energy will start to come out of their body and start to communicate with us. And from there we will know, yeah, it has a black magic effect. Earlier I had one, one uh, devotee who came with a uh, Thai Baran, you know, he was affected by these Thai Barans. He brought it, he bought it on uh, online with some mantras and everything. So when he went back home to chant and everything, the whole house went chaos. During our fire ceremony, our homa, we will usually open up certain portals 
to allow this energy to go back into that space. These amulets, everyone is selling online, carousel uh, and uh, whatever not, along the shops and everything with mantras. These amulets are very, very powerful. We have to understand this because they are chanted, they are chanted with mantras by monks and achans and everything. And uh, if someone really needs a protection, please go and find a proper achan or guru, get their blessing and they will give you a proper instruction of how to maintain all these things. Simply buying them online and stuff without understanding the power it possess, it can create a lot of chaos. I have to communicate with whatever uh, spirit that he has because we simply cannot go and uh, overpower those things because it is also life like us, right? So I have to give my first and foremost respect to it communicate with them to say that you see this is not the place you are supposed to be he has bought it wrong so I'm seeking your forgiveness so I'm giving you my offerings please take it as my offerings and uh, please leave this place and go into the space that you are supposed to be so that was the whole process of it hey ho John hey, is hey. in studio with us okay he's not in studio he's on the live with us right now hello John he's on your side <laughs> There's a party going on and I'm missing it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we, are, we are drinking wine and all. Yes, John. Cheers. cheers. I have nothing. I have nothing. Cheers, cheers, cheers. cheers. <laughs> it's good to have you back, Guru. Wow. Thank you. So tonight, tonight, looking forward to hearing a lot from you. All sorts of stories, all sorts of secrets. <laughs> it's good to be back I to think... Singapore. <laughs> what is the thing you miss most about Singapore? Food. <laughs> we all are foodie, you know, Singaporeans, and we love of all our food. We see yeah, that's the most important. <laughs> What's your favorite thing? What's your favorite dish? Chinese noodle, brother. <laughs> wow. Okay, set, set. set. We go for Chinese supper. noodle, authentic <laughs> Chinese noodles, supper. and then you get the life back on your tongue. You know, it's like, wow, oh, come back already. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Okay, we could spend the whole episode talking about food actually. But okay, yeah. no, no, no. Okay. So Eugene, you wanted to ask questions about uh, the fire ceremony. That's right. So um, mm. before that, Raven, thank you very much for your blessings. Oh. Mm. Raven is back. <laughs> Hello, Raven. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so ladies and gentlemen, if you want to do what Raven has done, uh, there is a dollar sign button right beside the comment button there. Click it because obviously I'm talking Murali here and looking at the comments. I may miss a lot of good comments that you have. So if you want to read something out or just want to uh, bless us with your generosity, click the dollar sign, put any amount and we'll be we very grateful. We won't miss you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Murali, that was the verdict fire. Ver ver Vedic. 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 Fire. Vedic. Vedic okay. fire magic. So tell us a bit more about that and what's that black magic uh, mm. case that we were solving then? Mm. So, um, first of all, we have to uh, understand about uh, the practice that I uh, come from, mm. right? I'm an uh, initiator into uh, certain practices and uh, that has given the uh, teaching of uh, how to conduct a uh, fire ritual. And mm. uh, there are many different types of uh, fire rituals conducted in the um, uh, Hindu practice, basically, or the spiritual practice. And uh, what I conduct is more towards the, uh, the path of the agoris. And um, mm. it's simplified in a uh, in many ways that we do not use uh, lengthy mantras or chanting process or offering into the thing because we are channeling more of our prana our energies from us mm, okay. that we are mm. transforming the energy of the uh, fire itself for intention mm. of what we are going to work on so mm. that is the whole purpose of it mm. and uh, the agori path or the uh, where we are conducting with the fire it actually works as a transmission a tool that helps us to communicate with us and, mm. uh, and the universe or the energies that surrounds us that mm. we are able to manifest and transform the energy in the way that we want we are channeling that and that is uh, being a channeler you know the fire becomes a channeler for us ah, and okay. everything Guru is soft <laughs> the Guru is soft, <laughs> <It's a bit laughs> soft. <laughs> you saying that the fire is a bit of like a, a multiplier Am does yes. it amplify the amplifier. energy that you are sending out yes, mm, yes. okay okay ah so what 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 was the thing that uh, you were what was the case that you were resolving? Tell uh, us a little bit about what the if girl I was going can through. remember that girl, uh, she's from uh, North India, and mm -hmm. uh, she was under the influence of a certain tantra practice that someone has uh, uh, intentionally put uh, some uh, black magic into a food and ask her to consume. Oh. 
because they wanted to seduce her in some ways and everything they wanted to have mm. more of her personal energies for their own benefit so mm. uh, because of that uh, she was experiencing all this uh, negativity that was uh, replaying in her mind and in her eyes and everything and her, she was always dreaming of this person that she's making love to him and everything you know mm. and uh, mm. even though she has came from uh, india to singapore but she still has that memory so strong that she can sense him and feel him and everything and uh, ah, okay. she can sense that this energy is always uh, looking at her and uh, she feels that uh, the changes in her body when these things are starting to happen mm, so okay. that is where we uh, conducted the uh, fire ritual to break that spell and mm. everything for her so i'm wondering right i mean i'm hearing a combination of <clears throat> what i guess we would normally call a love spell or something right where where he, the, the magic is meant to enchant her mm-hmm. to seduce her but then the result of it actually seems like he's a bit more of a energy vampire and yes. sort of draining her energy this is you know? a more than a love spell because the love spell mm. is just that they just want to have this person for themselves uh, because mm. of a relationship but uh, someone who has a uh, spiritual knowledge they mm. want to suck their energy because for their own uh, purpose and everything to enhance their own uh, spirituality and everything so this is more of a predatory kind of yes. thing lah Mm. Yes. So that the last time we had an episode about uh, love spells, and we we're talking about these type of things, and you wonder how many, how how many love spells are actually the beginning of a feeding spell. The most powerful love spell I say is just from your heart. Just go and mm. talk to someone to say that <laughs> I'm interested to know you, mm. and everything. Go, don't go and find all this <laughs> spell thing. Then what is this here? There's nothing here for you. <laughs> Guru's dating tips, huh, everyone. <laughs> yes, oh, come on, dear yeah. man. Friday night romance. Yes, <laughs> actually, that, that's why some of the the amulets really work because you people buy the amulet, and they whether it really hundred percent is like a magic item that they become mm. a different person, or more or less it boosts some of their confidence where they feel now with this amulet in my pocket, yes, I mm. ha- I can talk to any woman and they won't reject me. Mm. You know, and and you I ask mean, any ajan, they'll tell you amulet is only thirty percent boost or even fifteen percent. It's not a Correct. magic amulet. <laughs> I mean, I was talking to someone that day about the placebo effect, right? And and I, I mean, it's real. You know, so much of magic works on our mind rather than on the other person, right? Mm. It it transforms us wearing it or carrying the object. The talisman transforms you, and then suddenly you provide the magic. Exactly. You know, and. I, That's a wonderful thing, but then again, of course, you know, it that smaller percentage of real magic, ah, uh, that one is harder to play with, lah. Yeah. You know, what what are some of the ways that you can, uh, not not for my knowledge, ah, uh, but for, <laughs> asking you know, for a friend, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm just right. Let me get my pen. Uh, what are some of the ways that you can, um, sort of identify if you are being drained, you know, if your energy is being consumed by someone, you know. Mm. But uh, will you always know who it is, or, or that, does it just happen? Uh, for one to understand uh, themselves first to see whether mm. their energies are being drained is simply by observing their patterns of sleep. Ah, okay. Sleep is a very important uh, dimension where a lot of messages will be coming, mm. right? And also your physicality, uh, movements, and everything—the heaviness in your shoulders. Or mm. you you just feel dehydrated constantly, or you do not feel hungry, and all these things, and you have uh. constant reminder of someone, you know, someone's faces is just keep on coming, and then for sure you have mm. someone has done some spells on you. Mm. you know? mm, okay, okay, so that is like the fingerprint that yes. the person places yes. on the spell, right? Yes. The images. Okay. Because okay. you're having the same, the certain memory is keep on coming and replaying, replaying, replaying. You know, and right. uh, you know that uh, something has been done. Okay, mm. so without the memory, then it might be COVID, lah. Maybe. But <laughs> with the images, then you know, you know that it's yes. intentional, right? Yes, intentional. But, but would you know who's the one who cast the spell? Would you be able yes. to trace it? Do you have a like when you go when you do all this cleansing thing? Does an image come to your mind? Yes, when I do a uh, cleansing, usually I will be able to see who has done on what purpose or who have they mm. engaged. And uh, uh-huh. what type of magic they have done? So I'm able to trace and see these things. But I will not tell the client because most of the time we do not want to uh, create the uh, the impression on them that they are going to uh, do some harm mm. to the other person. You know, yeah, just yeah, by yeah. telling that okay, this is your enemy, 
and this mm. is the one who have done for you and then they will be having this <laughs> back thought that okay i need to do something back for correct, you correct oh, correct you know? yeah so don't no need to start war yeah, don't, don't need to start, start war, war. Yeah. Just yeah just keep it like so usually do you you do you do you do you punish these people in any way when you find out that they're doing it or do you just send it back and then I will uh, just Ye- unlock. Uh, depends ah. on situations also. I will just mm. unlock and uh, send it back to where it is, or mm. sometimes just tarnish it away, destroy the ah, thing, okay. so it doesn't okay. cause harm to anyone else. Mm. Right. When I mean, you do all this, would you not put yourself in the crossfire, the crosshair of the person's target? Like, say, this um, uh, person A has called upon a, a black magic practitioner to cast a spell, and then you undo it. Then can the black magic practitioner now? choose to target you and attack you instead. Yes, recently I had a uh, experience ah. on this. <laughs> it was um, super crazy. I was working on this case for two days mm. where um, someone has um, the ex-wife has cast a spell on this guy oh. and uh, something was stuck in him. So I was working on uh, to remove the thing and everything. Mm. And um, I saw a face of uh, a practitioner from Indonesia sitting down in the forest and everything. Uh-huh. And um, so while I was driving, I sensed that something was coming to hit me to cause me an accident. Oh. So I chant my mantra to do a protection. Chun chun, something land on my vehicle, and uh, there was a yeah. bang, and my vehicle just start to surf. It was a gin that was sent, oh. and I lock. Lucky I chant the mantra to lock my space, and the vehicle just surf and did not collide into anything. Mm. So I move on to to my destination. And at night, I saw this bomo standing in front of me, looking at me and warning me. And, uh, oh. and I warned him back. I said, "You try much more harder, then let's start a war." Oh. <laughs> so it was oh. going going on for two days, and the guy uh. just um, uh, I sent him something in return as a gift because he sent Uh-oh. me something. So I sent him written as a gift to him, and uh, two days was ongoing. Then um, it subsided. Okay, okay. Yeah, but that was he was quite strong. He was a young bomo. Uh, hmm. From what I sense, that they are practicing really deep enough for wow. some forested area. And mm. uh, it's being it's being passed down from generation after generation, kind of a mm, thing. Mm, and someone right. is always sitting down and doing rituals to on these black magic things that they have placed around there. So it's pretty pretty strong. Oh wow! You know? I can Im- I can imagine like black magic has to be a bit like you know. You know those uh, hawker stalls where they have the, f- the 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 meat in the stew and the pot is like centuries old and you they, you know they never wash right. Yeah. So it's those those ritual those candles have been burning for how long? Mm. You know, and the the magic is deep and powerful. You know. Yes. It's not like a freshly freshly cast spell, not that kind. You know, but something with tradition and with history behind it. Wow. Okay. Okay. There are people who do this as. They are mm, because of their lineage, you know. Mm. They are people who are carrying certain lineage or certain energies that they have. That mm. this is their full-time thing, like generations Correct. after generations, and they mm. are just creating so much of energy into all these things. Mm. You know, you just But, imagine generations are just pumping in energies after energies yeah. and maintaining all these things. So it's it's really very technical if you are going to work on some things. Right, right, right. I'm just curious. Can can this younger generation escape this cycle? You know, let's say you are born into the family, you know, and there's all these generations of black magic, and then you say, "Oh, I want to be an accountant." <laughs> <laughs> you know, what do you think are the chances of a Gen Z, Gen Z Bomo? <laughs> Gen Z Bomo. <laughs> it it really depends because the uh, <laughs> the spirits or the uh, deities that they are carrying with them, right? Uh. It's connected with their DNA and their genetics. So mm. even if they in this modern uh, Gen Z generation and everything, <laughs> you will still find them. They cannot escape because oh, they, they have run. certain responsibility to look mm. after this. Correct. You Correct. know, so they cannot ignore. I've right, seen right, cases right. where they have ignored. They want to change, and yeah. things have gone wrong for them. Ay ay ay. Okay mm. okay. Wow. Okay, tonight is a very good chance for all of you to be shooting your questions. Okay, I've got like a list of questions slowly yeah. that I will <laughs> slowly leak out. So everyone, please prepare your questions. Okay, yeah. wow! In all the time that you've you you you've done adventures with Eugene, right? 
which one is your most memorable? <laughs> uh, that one that we went to um, uh, North <laughs> India to Manali. Oh, ah. that was a real good experience that uh, <laughs> uh, we have. Yeah, <laughs> you still remember? Is this the one with the fireflies? Yes, mm. the fireflies ah, okay. one. Uh, we, I was we, there. Mm. I think in you know, August 2022. Two. 2022. Mm. 2022. I was there, and <clears throat> I I spent it about a, a week, maybe a week plus there, and under mm. the guidance of uh, Guru Murali. And back then, I was interested in spirituality. Have always been, in the past decade. But you know, with all the meditation and all the efforts to try to reach a spiritual realm. It's not mm. easy. Uh, it really is not, ladies and gentlemen. I can I can share. If it's not like some people who are gifted into it, they close their eyes, they meditate, they can. I was one of those that meditate as as much as I want to. I I fall asleep and I just cannot get anywhere. Um, nah. <laughs> you are born to be accountant. Like. <laughs> born to be accountant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was there in a five thousand year old uh, uh, Sri Rama temple, mm. and mm. I sat there wow. in the inner sanctum, uh, and. Guru Murali says, "Ah, oh, you just meditate." I said, "Yeah, lah, meditate. <laughs> okay, lah. It's say easy, lah. But let's try, right? Let's not. You, you're in a five thousand year old temple. You have a guru beside you. The last thing you want to do is just be so <laughs> negative about it." So I sat there, <laughs> and I just cleared my mind and go into my or attempt to go into my meditative state. Mm. And I think Guru was beside me. He probably felt something, and then started. He started doing the whole Om. <laughs> and it reverberated through the whole inner sanctum, and it mm. really felt like the IMAX theater. You know, the the, the re- <laughs> it bounces against the wall. It comes in front of you. You could mm. literally feel the vibration in your skin and everywhere. Nice. That's how the IMAX theater. <laughs> how powerful the the, the effect was. Ancient IMAX. Ancient IMAX. Yeah. Okay. And I was closing my eyes, and I I had flashes of golden light, and it's mm. almost as if someone took a torchlight and just go in front of your eyes and and did this. Right? Ah, okay, okay. And of course, curious, I opened my eyes. Ah. Mm. I was in a dark chamber. The only light came from the doorway at the back. There is no ah. golden light. And whatever light that spilled into the sanctum was just a small doorway of white light. Mm. So I closed my eyes again. And then after a while, I felt uh, Guru put a finger on my third eye. And mm. I from that point on, I saw uh, a light show. It's almost like <laughs> Sentosa light show. I saw laser <laughs> lights, everything. <laughs> But what I was really curious about my experience was It wasn't just the light. I downloaded information. Like when I opened my uh-huh. eyes, I felt like Neo in Matrix. I go, I know Kung Fu. <laughs> <laughs> Except in this case, uh, I knew the history of the the, the temple. And I told mm. Guru, I said, I saw a river. I saw this. I saw people walking everything. And then he says, mm. that is what Sri Rama wants you to see. That was 5,000 right. years ago right here. And ah, he says, so you got the guided tour, lah. Guided tour. Then he says, <laughs> now that you know how to meditate, go back home and meditate. And mm-hmm. so I did, and I couldn't. <laughs> and then you have to sit in a five thousand year old uh, H- HDB flat first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and then the other part, where I think Yuri are uh, rightfully mentioned, where I was sitting inside um, the cremation ground, and mm. we meditated and we called upon the spirits, and that's where the minute he called upon spirits, we saw fireflies floating in. Mm. And as I was meditating, I had a vision that there was somebody standing behind Guru, and I look mm. at him. He looked at me, exchanged his knowing glance, and I said, "Is there someone on your right <laughs> shoulder?" He says, "Ah, you can see as well." <laughs> so okay. that was how it started. <laughs> so now we have we have Guru here. Please tell us about the fireflies and the person behind your right shoulder. What was it that What was it that Eugene was seeing? He was actually uh, seeing a spirit that was uh, guarding the space. Over there. Ah, okay. So uh, we wanted to do a video uh, and let Eugene have an experience of a spirit coming and touching him and everything. Mm. So <laughs> we were by this place. Uh, it was quite a forested area where my friend actually brought us. Mm. Uh, by the riverside and everything was so beautiful. Mm. And uh, I did a protection and I called out the spirit that was guarding the space and it came. And mm. uh, literally I could see... Him The face was looking at him, moving inside, touching, and everything. Oh. It was moving in front, and it was confusing. Who is this guy? These two guys here <laughs> sitting down and calling me. <laughs> How have I come with their command and everything? He's like, it was like very confused. Oh. And then uh, I said, it's a uh, blessings and everything. Then uh, mm. allow it to go, and it just disappeared into the uh, the bushes and everything. <laughs> 
Okay, yeah. so woke him up from his nap lah, just yeah, to say hi to him. Yeah, like, and the part where it's it's hard to say is a coincidence is the minute uh. he chanted out loud, the butterflies uh. came and lingered, mm. and the minute he gave mm. his goodbye uh, mantra. They left. Uh. It's almost as if the fireflies, if they weren't spirits, they understood what he was asking of. Hmm. So were they real fireflies or were they spirit oh, fireflies? Real fireflies. Real fireflies. Yeah, real okay, fireflies okay. actually came from the uh, from the riverside and formed uh. like a figuring kind of a thing and it moved forward. Wow. Okay. Drawn by the energy. Yes. Oh. Okay. 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 It was fun. Okay. Uh, a very quick thank you to two of our super chatters, uh, UTL Vlogs. Thank you for your donation. Is that an orange or something? That's a little round face. And Desmond Lim, thank you. First super chat. Uh, and, al- and also we have uh, Candy Chia. Who, um, Hello, Candy. Candy Chia, who sent me a private message uh, along Ooh. with a $10 donation as well. Thank you. Thank you, Candy. Nice. Uh, <laughs> uh, this question is for you, uh, Guru. Mm. I got her to send a photo as well so you can connect with her spiritually. This mm. is Candy. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and the question that she has for you is, is my dead mother in a safe place? She suddenly disappeared when I was 12 because her mom died when she was four mm. and accompanied mm. her all the way till she was 12 and then disappeared. Mm. So mm. She's, she's always been trying to connect to the mom or at least she wants to know what happened to the mom's spirit. Are you able to send? This is the mom? This is her. Her. Yeah, I mm. have the mom picture. Candy, do you have the, your mom's picture? I'm not sure if you do because she passed away mm. when Candy was four. So if you mm. have the picture, send it to me. Uh, I'll get Murali to connect. So what could have uh, possibly be happened is uh, her time of uh, to wander around has stopped mm. and she has moved on to where she's mm. supposed to go. Because uh, that is the law of nature that the spirits have, that they have to move on, and uh, they can't be a guardian spirit all the uh, once they exit out of their family, uh, uh, exit out of their body, and uh, right. they can be moving around just like that. So once their time has come, and they will move on to their next life, and I think mm. that is why you will not be able to sense them. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Actually, a lot of questions are starting to pop up. Um, Nicole wanted to ask, uh, Hi Guru, which region of the world would you say practices black magic the most? Oh, oh. oh. I think mm. worldwide. I've seen, <laughs> I've seen practices from Mexico, South America, Russia, oh. uh, Philippines, uh, mm. Indonesia, Thailand. Oh. I think... Uh, Except Antarctica and Greenland, I think all the other places have a lot of practices are still active. And recently, I came across a witch, a witch practice uh, ah. that is being still very active in uh, Romania. They have a, a whole ah. group of them uh, still working on this uh, mm. witchcraft. That's also being passed down by generations and everything. So it's like, it's everywhere. Maybe it's easier to ask if there are any regions of the world where there are no black magic practitioners. Uh, Antarctica, maybe? Greenland, <laughs> Iceland, where there's no human being. As long as there's human being around, as long as there are uh, uh, traditional and cultural things are around, practices has been always been there. I, I, mm, I've got mm. a question, and this is something that John and I usually talked about on the show, especially when it comes to Western and Eastern, because you said everywhere has black magic. Now, mm. there's it all worked the same for you, like a Romanian magic or, uh, uh, you know, versus a, a Indian magic or maybe a mm. voodoo practice from Mexico. Is it all the same? Because in some of the previous confessions that John and I talked about, one of the mm. things that we hypothesized was that the Western energy and Eastern energy, sometimes they don't really mix. Mm. Uh, what, what's your take on that? The understanding is this... The main base of uh, the black magic is the mind. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay? okay, that is the common factor among mm. all the practices. It's the mind and how they manifest using their mind energy to create something. Right, right. And the second part is the type of practices that they are using. Mm. So mm. when I'm removing or when I'm working on something, I will first try to understand the practices first so that I can mm. unlock that spell accordingly. Right. Mm-hmm. Then from there, I will understand the energy of the mind, how powerful they have used the energy mm. of their mind. So from there, I'm able to uh, unlock that spell and everything. 
Mm, okay. That's how I work. And, and I'm thinking that because the human mind is always wicked in the same way, right? Yes. Wherever we are, we we are, we all do evil things the same, pretty much the same way. Yes. So the, the the fundamental part is the same. Yes. But the way that it's performed, the way it's manifested, might be slightly different. Yes. Mm. Right. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. Sorry. So okay. No, so. Derek Lim and Lok Shea have a question. Uh, same question, which is, have Guru ever encountered any case that you could not resolve? Oh, <gasps> oh unsolved cases. Yes, uh, one or two they are. They are the, earlier, I was sharing the uh, where I had a fight with a Bomo and everything. Ah, for okay, two okay. Days. And uh, the third day, someone uh, came in to say that, okay, I'm going to help him. Uh, you're not able to help him. I will go in to help him. And they went into the case. So I say, okay. Oh. Oh, okay. So, so they took someone else took the case away. Someone else took the case, so they left. So I do not, I do not fo- do the follow up and everything. So it was, mm. it was very challenging because from here in Singapore, I was trying to pull out the uh, the uh, entity from him, the barang from him, and from uh-huh. there the the Bomo was pulling it back. So Ayyoh. I was pulling out. He was pulling back, pulling out, pulling back, and the guy was like vomiting, moving, vomiting oh, for no. six hours. He was super exhausted. So I have to let him rest. You know, the yep, body is yep. being traumatized so much for the few hours that he need to rest. Mm. And here are two people who are like fighting. It's like one is trying to pull out and another guy is trying to pull it back. So it was war. really <laughs> hard work for two days. And then on the oh. third day, someone came as a hero to say, I'm going to uh, save this guy. And I think it's okay. Do you even know the person who came in or he just randomly got sent he, by? He randomly came in because people are so desperate. You know, they call here, call mm. there. They find oh, a lot correct, of people. Correct. and. So do you know yeah. if in the end it was resolved? No, I never follow up. I don't follow up. Once <laughs> someone has taken over, I say thank you. <laughs> mm. okay, so I'm going to ask a practical Singaporean question here, mm. right? Is, is this rewarding work? Like, do you do you charge for it? Is there is is there a market rate? Or how do you even... I know you don't use this to make a living, but is this even something that's worth your time? Definitely, we, I have a price range where when I'm uh, working on cases and everything because the... Uh, I have a company registered. Mm. First of all, mm. I pay my taxes. <laughs> right? Yeah. First of all. <laughs> yes. Because the uh, one thing more powerful than black magic. Yes. Is IRS, have to pay IRS. tax. <laughs> have to declare your your accounts and uh, whatever that you're earning. It is Singapore. Mm. Come on. Otherwise, they will send tax magic. Yes. Mm. <laughs> that is more powerful. No magic can overpower them. <laughs> Death and taxes, right? Yes. Okay, sorry. Um, can okay. you just send me the photo? Mm. That's her mom. Ah. What's her name? Candy, what's her name? Text me, please. Okay. So while we wait for Candy mm. to... to uh, mm. John, I think there's some messages coming. We might yeah. want to take a, a, do a quick Q&A session now before we lose <laughs> the message, before we go on to the next okay. profession. Uh, thanks to uh, Ewan Kwa for your very generous donation. He says, thanks so much for joining us tonight, Guru Morali. Yay. Thank you. Okay. Okay, here's a question from Sundip, who is asking, how does one find a spiritual master to learn how to remove magic? Is there any country where it's easier for masters to accept disciples? Ah, oh. Okay, so two parts. Huh? Mm. How does one find the master if you need to remove magic? So first of all, you are finding a master to, to learn about practices and everything. So there are different schools and uh, there are different gurus uh, who work according to that. Uh, so you have to really mm. search because you have to understand the uh, energy of the guru and the energy of yourself that you are something have to set in really ah, before the master okay. give you the teaching this is not like something like you're going to a school and they yeah. give you a book at a mm. Harry Potter school no it doesn't work <laughs> in such a way so there's a lot of things that uh, the guru will uh, cultivate you put you into mm. practice to mold you right. to change you into everything before the real teaching of all these things done Ah, so, so it's, it's like those kung fu films lah, where yes. before they di- accept you as disciple, they must tekan you hard, yes. hard until they really like bah, 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 bah. <laughs> clean correct, the floor, correct. wash the toilet, <laughs> wipe on, on wipe off. <laughs> <laughs> so fair enough, fair enough. Your characters have to change, your personality uh, have to change a lot. Your understanding mm. about all these things have to be there before you are given the teachings. Mm. But mm. there are I real can, proper yeah. schools that also teach, and also, I also have uh, now started to. Uh, 
do a teaching on this and everything. So. <laughs> mm, have you accepted disciples? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Ooh, okay. uh, Everyone queue up, I queue up. I, 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 I might be the first Chinese agori. The first Chinese agori. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it did not come easy. In fact, uh, sometimes it's also about the master choosing you. And mm. I think for the four or five years, I know uh, Guru Murali, I have never once, or, or I mean not in the first five years, or asked him, hey, how uh, can you accept me or not, you know? And I think it only came after the trip to India and then I mm. felt awakened. I felt there's a certain affinity mm. and I started going very much into spirituality and I think we were in Singapore one time and we were driving and almost out, almost like a joke, he says, um, I have the dark energy to mm. practice the agori path. And mm. I said, you know, all the agori, all long hair, never shower, eat the <laughs> human meat. I also have to do that. Uh. Then That's he a says, grunge, grunge then he look. Say, you look at me, am I doing that? <laughs> uh, and I think that was a, a, a long conversation that will probably take hours to talk about the agori lineage. But one thing uh, resonated with me is the philosophy of uh, the agori practice is always from within, not relying on the yeah. external. And right. uh, to, answer, to answer, I think, Desmond's question as well, it's when's the right time you know the right time will come when it happens you cannot search for it you cannot look for it you cannot you cannot ask or buy buy it as well so when i got into it i started the meditation and everything i did a proper ritual at the uh, changi beach that came mm. one year after we talked about the chinese agori right. so it was not immediate mm. anyway but mm. the minute that happened i guess also perhaps morally saw the right time to to, mm. to unlock then it was just very easy after that. Everything just fell into place. So being right now as an infant in this whole practice, mm. I'm still very clear of the steps that it took to reach where I am. And all I can right. say is when the time is right, the things just happen and it would not even be an effort. It's just falls into mm. place. That's how I would describe it. Yes. Any, any, any thoughts you have about my initiation? Um, I'm happy to receive the uh, introduce the uh, first Chinese agori. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big step. It's a big change that is going to happen mm. in the, uh, the world of the agoris and everything. Yeah. Wow, and the ghost will be so confused. Yes. Yeah. Okay. No, actually not because um, recently when I was in uh, Varanasi uh, mm. in uh, India and everything, I saw a lot of uh, angmos, a lot of uh, whites who are practicing into this path also, uh, the agori mm. path and everything, but not a Chinese. So I'm very ah. happy. <laughs> represent, 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 uh, represent. It's opening up a new path uh, to many out there. Yeah, and everything. <laughs> so speaking of okay. agori, when we talk mm. about agori, first thing that comes mm. to mind, if people even know what agori is, it appears very dark. So mm. today's title, mm. as what Carlos Cole nicely pointed out, did I mean dark ritual as in non-mainstream ritual, or dark as in evil as how mm. people would understand it? So I put that name out on purpose. Mm. Uh, what is the Agori practice to you? So first of all, the Agori practice is uh, is one of the weirdest practice that um, in uh, the mainstream uh, spiritual practice in uh, India, mm. right? But the darkness that we are talking about is uh, the darkness of their mind about themselves, rather than the darkness of energies that is around them. So people are always confused that when we say darkness means they are always talking about entities, spirit, ghosts, mm. or some other things that are related in other dimensions. No. The mm -hmm. darkness here that we are working on is your own darkness in yourself that you need to right. understand. The mm. pains that you have gone through, your trauma, your mm. the things that you have suppressed in you, the things that you do not want to address mm. about yourself, you know. Correct. It's easy on all uh, path of meditation or spirituality. They ask you to close your eyes and go into the light practice. You know, you mm. see the happiness, the light and uh, the peacefulness and everything, but not on your darkness. So yes. that is what the Agori practice actually is about understanding your own darkness. Mm. When you understand your own darkness and you are appreciating them and you are learning mm. from them and you mm. overcome them mm. and then you flow into the darkness it will give you that that path to go into the light of yours ah okay okay so that is what the agori practice actually is it is not about uh drinking or eating a <laughs> meat <laughs> or going doing all the funny stuff of what you've seen in the youtube documentaries and everything no mm. it is about so you, yourself so you don't have to live immorally to feed such a thing right no 
mm, you draw from yeah, within. I, I was drawn by the immoral acts. Like, then I need to realize that you only have to. Yeah. Some <laughs> kind of cheater. La. What happened to the, not, you know, the, the, the sex parties and orgies? Uh? Yeah. <laughs> not as advertised. Nah. Okay. <laughs> We are, okay, here's we are more in a civilized uh, environment and everything. So practices have to change in order mm-hmm. that we are able to um, live together harmony in in our our social life and our spiritual mm. practice. No, we are not going to leave everything and go to the cremation ground and uh, into the forest area. No, yeah. we are not going to do that. You know. So you are now a uh, executive agori, uh, okay? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I endorse them. I endorse. endorse them. White collar agori. Yes. Okay. 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 Well, here's a very interesting question. Uh, mm-hmm. The Mings is asking. Uh, good evening, Guru. Would you actually carry the karma of other people if you help someone who has a disturbance due to past life ghost haunting? Okay. So, if someone is being haunted because of a karmic debt that is being repaid, and you help the person, do you then take on some of the responsibility? Does the karma spill on to you? As long as I'm working on someone, twenty-five mm. percent of your karma is mine. Ah. So I have to take that onto myself. Seventy-five mm. percent is cleared because of this body. The vessel is working, so it's mm. a it's a exchange of energy, right? Yes. That I'm uh, I'm uh, channeling my energies into you, and uh, mm. to cleanse whatever that you you are experiencing and absorbing it back. So my body mm. experiences that and. There are residues of at least about twenty five percent of whatever that your karma is becomes mine. So my life gets entangled into all these things. So ah, that is why okay. if you see uh, uh, monks or high level mm. spiritual people, they don't even allow you to touch them. Mm. They don't mm. ever allow you to go near them because they are very protective of their energies around them. Right, right, right. And do you find over time that you have to go away and like detox a yes. bit, you know, cleanse some of that karma that you have collected over time? Yes, sometimes it just get overwhelming that my body is just out of control. I will go into a sickness, I have a, mm. a diarrhea and everything. So I know my body is becoming very heavy mm. and all these stuff. Then the only place I will go to is Varanasi, Ganges, dip myself, mm. stay there for five days, meditate, and. Mm. So it's cleanse. not easy doing and spiritual work, no? That's. You know, it's not like you wave your wand and then mm. there's no repercussions for nah. you. <laughs> yeah. uh, Guru, do you have any uh, stories for us? Because, um, you know, at the end of the day, Supernatural Confessions, all our listeners are hungry for ghost stories. Ghost stories. Yeah, do you have any for us? Um, recently, I had um, uh, a client from uh, Germany. She, mm. um, she came for... Uh, she has some episodes of a uh, curse that she sees in her family. Uh, mm. Children being um, uh, having going through a sexual experience since young and everything, and the boys in the house are going a bit cuckoo, you know, tripping. So mm. she don't understand why there's a repetition of things that is happening in their family and stuff. Mm. So when we were working uh, on her, and mm. uh, we start to realize that these are memories of curses that has been brought down from mm. her generation of people. Because oh. they live in uh, during the period of the war, World mm. War I World War and uh, World War II. And mm. uh, during this time, there was a lot of things that has happened. And uh, with slavery was also there and everything. Mm. And all these things, memories just started to replay in her on why such things are uh-huh. starting okay. to happen. And uh, mm. she was, uh, we were working in a way that she was releasing one by one. And I'm telling you, it's like over 100 oh. over kind of... Uh, soul and spirit was just transmitting out of her moving out moving out moving and she could really see them and mm. she was uh, giving me the brief description of how exactly each and every one of them are looking where the slave mm. were actually chained and everything you know they are moving out and uh, mm. there was a, a witch in her family that uh, was having black scarf and everything and uh, mm. after the whole ritual the very next day she saw the same feather but it was in white in her room Oh, you know, so she realized that whatever that she has done for the night, it has really went through, and there was a change of energy to be ah, more okay, positive okay. and things. So that is oh. a one. Um, uh, it was quite interesting for me to understand about curses, uh, mm. how the uh, Europeans are actually um, experiencing them because of the uh, mm. uh, uh, situations back then, and right. how it has impact in their life and mm. everything. Wow, what was it about her that caused her to become, uh, you know, to to be such a magnet for all these? Um, it... One of uh, f- uh, 
great grandmother or great great grandmother she was actually a a, a slave that was put into the uh, prostitute den and everything okay and, uh, mm. after that she got married into the family and she still hold that trauma in the, in her mm. and mm, the okay. curse that she has and the trauma mm. and that memories that she has was so strong that every woman in her family started to experience uh, this mm. uh, abuse of her sexuality and everything was coming down in uh-huh. her family and stuff and okay. someone in her family uh, was also a doctor a male who was a doctor was giving medicines but he gave out poison to a lot of people Ayyo. and all the males were affected with the uh, memories and mm. everything you know mm. so this two thing was so prominent that it was just repeating in their families and stuff wow, this is a very interesting sort of gray area where ptsd yes. becomes something spiritual also yes. you know that the trauma can take can take a form right can manifest and be passed on to other people who mm. didn't live through the trauma yeah you know right wow okay But this is very interesting can can this kind of so we we have something called the pancha kosha Now for many of us who don't really understand the depth of this various levels of curses or affliction um I would speak on on behalf of the mainstream psyche at least in Singapore mm. when you kena something sway depending on the religion you're from flower water drinking talisman water um, going to church holy blessing something as simple as that can solve it uh you also have something called the pancha kosha Uh, is there is there something is that a catch all thing that can be cleansed or is there a limit to what it can do? So to understand mm. what a pancha kosha means, it's a auric mm. field that the body has, right? Mm. So this auric field is a magnetic field where we attract a lot of things, like what Buddha have explained. What you think you become, right? So mm. your memories, your thoughts, your action, your words. Your energies that you carry. If you every day just calling bad words, you're always thinking negative negativity and everything. You'll be only attracting all these things. Right. And this negative imprints will be stuck to your magnetic field. So mm. when people mm. see your face, ready, they ayo. I don't want to see the face. Why? Because you <laughs> you're carrying that type of energy in your face and everything. Right. Right. So a pancha kosha cleansing is just a cleansing where we are cleansing this auric field to fill mm. it up with positive energy. But the most important thing is your mind. The same thing here. It's about your mm. mind and attitude of life. If every mm. day you're cursing and swearing and you want good things to happen to you, nothing will happen. Mm. Right, right. So the pancha kosha is like a reset, lah. It's a reset of your mm. external auric field and everything. <laughs> so that there will be some positive energy that comes to you, and there will be positive changes in you that you will start to attract mm. positive things, positive thoughts, positive action, positive words that help mm. you to uh, move up. But it's just a very basic level of things. But if you want to go further about cleansing or rituals, then I have to read into your your karmic chart or about whatever mm. that happened to understand the pattern of it, and that is where I can work upon mm. individually. Mm. Wow, this mm. sounds like you go for cleansing, then Guru Marali will check you out, or if you need <laughs> uh, more help, then we escalate the situation. Yes. Right? Correct, uh, correct. For those I of mean, you, who, sorry, uh, John, John, John. No, no, go, go, go ahead, go ahead. So for those of you who don't know what pancha kosha is, because it, it, I only heard of the word. When I spoke to you, so mm. I decided to put myself through it. Mm. John, if you get the chance as well, you can wake up on Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> Does it only happen in the morning? Sunday yes. morning, because yeah. <laughs> there's a oh. meditation, there's cleansing. We need the sun and everything. Yes, um. but let's take a look at this clip of me going through my first panchakosha. Mm. you go into the water feel your energy feel yourself think of your ancestors call them think of all your spiritual guides your deities that you are working with connecting with they are our link to the universe om namo narayana 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 
back into the sea. Release all your negativity. Absorb the positiveness from nature. Meditate for a while. Connect with nature itself and come back. You saw the part where I got shocked because the water was very cold. <laughs> uh, so that was guys, also an ice uh, bath. It was also an ice bath. Yeah, the yeah. ice bucket challenge. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys are interested, it removes uh, negative energy, rely on your chakra, panchakosha cleansing. It's happening on the 28th of uh, April this this month. This uh, month that's Sunday. actually next Sunday. Mm. So we already mm. have five people signing up. It's a very small group, as you can see. Uh, we, we Obviously, this is not like a mess bathing ceremony. Mm. So if you're interested, there's a couple of slots left. Uh, get in touch with me. My number is pinned at the top of this group chat. Uh, 94594931. Mm. Happening on the 28th of April, 9.30 a.m. <laughs> All right, over to you, John. Okay, um, just a couple of things to read out. Uh, ASAP Moa is uh, new here. Hello, buddies. Uh, I was just listening to Eugene Tae's Supernatural Confessions and came to know about this channel. I've been a fan of Ghost Maps these past few years and I'm happy to see you. Yeah, we are all fans of Ghost Maps as well, yeah. but we're glad you're here. Okay, um, I had a question I wanted to ask. So I was watching the video, right, and watching Eugene you know, being splashed. And I was wondering... Is there any comparison or, or any points of comparison between uh, a Panchakosha ritual and let's say the uh, Christian ritual of baptizing by water? Uh, you know, it's using the two, water to... two different uh, hmm. uh, intention set. Ah, okay. Right. The, uh, the element is the same, the water. But hmm. if you are looking at the uh, baptism, the, uh, hmm. their intention is to baptize you so that you are going into a new uh, ideology of practices and everything. Yeah. But a Panchakosha is about more about cleansing, where we use the energy of mantras that we channel into the water. Hmm. Hmm. And uh, that mantra, because as we know that water is able to hold memories and ch change their uh, memories into something right, more positive right. or something more negative. Mm. So why we use the uh, fragrance, the flowers and everything is to create a positive aura, a positive mm. fragrance that we have. And when we are chanting a specific mantra to cleanse, then mm. the water acts according to it. Whereas mm. the, uh, the baptize is totally different because the intention is totally different. True, mm. true. So the baptism is about change, right? Yes. And it's about transformation. Whereas uh, the Panchakosha is more about... Mean, uh, Tuning. Yes. Right? Tuning Fine and tuning maintaining. <laughs> yeah, correct. And that's mm. nice. Okay. So, please go for the Panchakosha, everyone. Those who can wake up in the morning, go. <laughs> yeah, and I will go for the... And Lama also by the... After ah. the... Uh, oh, yeah. We usually do that. Yeah, we usually do that. Yeah. <laughs> Breakfast time. Okay, okay. Let me know when there's a late night Panchakosha. <laughs> <laughs> then, then you go for Prata. Water is cold, la, brother. Night. La. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Guru okay. Murali, you've been doing this so many years, right? Mm. Like, I would imagine that you've probably seen it all, nothing phases you anymore, there's no new information. But is there anything that you have learned recently that shocks the bejesus out of you in, in terms of your, your understanding of the world and the practices? Yes. A um, mm. few weeks ago, I had a client uh, who came and... Uh, also about curses because they feel certain mm. reputation something was happening in their family and everything. Mm. And I tune in to her energy to understand. And I saw a, a very uh, a unique image. It's like a, a partial triangle with a circ uh, partial circle with a, something like an X on okay. top of it. And I draw it out to say uh, it was a book. What I saw was mm. a book. Can you draw it for us here? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Partial circle, partial triangle. I have any problem trying to picture that. It's like the ice cream <laughs> cone, but uh, yes, something, uh, ice something cream like cone. this. Some oh. like, uh, it was like a book. It was a brown uh, old book uh, with with this image, like ice cream cone oh. upside down. Okay, upside down ice cream cone. And okay, uh, has been okay. guess what? She told me that it's the book of the uh, Illuminati and her family wow. uh, ancestors were part of this Illuminati process where they ah. have actually used. Black magic on people to gain power, to gain uh, oh. support, to gain strength. And I was like, what? <laughs> Such thing what? really exists? <laughs> you know, When's you know, your next meeting? Can I go? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was like, it was really a, a total different experience because I've heard of this word. I've heard of this mm. group that exists, but never really come across. 
And yeah. uh, someone from that lineage I see has the ring. You know? He has the <laughs> ring. Look at that. I want of them. They're one of them. <laughs> and yeah, they actually the exist. <laughs> and they had these particular rituals in uh, back then. Uh, oh. Child sacrifice, animal sacrifice, mm. black magic mm. to gain power over people, to gain control over things and other things. Like, it was really wow. Was Is she going to get in trouble for telling you this? No, because uh, they have... St- put a stop into all this practice but the, uh, ah, she's okay. not so sure where the, the book is but she has seen this book she has oh, seen okay, this okay. book when she was young and everything but mm. this thing is not being practiced anymore this would be good for a museum <laughs> <laughs> let me see if I can get it yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but this, is a big, is this is a big gang you know Illuminati is very difficult to bypass them <laughs> okay. that's true that's true if you all catch anyone, me anyone could be a public spy toilet, again. you know that I'm not taking my life <laughs> <laughs> But never mind. At least at the museum, we can serve Illuminati ice cream. We uh, serve the ice cream, then, <laughs> then we <laughs> invert the ice cream. <laughs> Three dollars, please. Oh, <laughs> Someone was asking earlier, and this is quite an interesting question. So, uh, Guru, have you been able to help people remotely, oh. right? Like, 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 like Candy is is trying to do, right? You know, uh, someone who is uh, uh, far away and is perhaps uh, affected by a curse or things that are affected. Are it- you able to? Remotely dep- help them or must they come and look for you in person? It depends on cases. If the curses mm. is strong and everything, then I need them to be physically mm. present. Why? Because okay. their physical body is carrying that energy with them. And right, right. Me just giving instruction, they mm. do not have that energy in them to cleanse it off because they are already weak and they are already affected. So I need to, they have to be present in uh, where I am when I'm doing the practices mm. and everything. Mm. where I can channel that energy to break away all these things. That is why right. I always advise people to come in. Uh, then we are able to do this. Mm. But after so they come z- once and you connect with them, then the, the remote thing can happen? Yes, after that it can happen. Because ah, so things fo- the become- follow-up can be remote? Yes. Ah, okay. So, so Zoom technology has not <laughs> has not advanced enough yeah. to allow your, your healing to go through Zoom. Huh? Okay. Mm. So I hope that answers your question for those of you who are asking, mm. okay? Um, <laughs> I like this one. Uh, Observer says, I don't know about PTSD, but when a hungry person sits next to me, her energy somehow affects me. Suddenly, I'm hungry too. Mm. <laughs> I we think all, that's just... We are uh, all energy beings, you know? We, we yeah. revibrate and everything. We can sense people and everything. We all have that. Is that mm. why when someone yawns, I also feel like yawning? Yes. Candy <laughs> 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 okay, has uh, so replied, Candy's ah. mom's name is Go So Hyang. A Buddhist practitioner told me she could be banished by the monks. Uh, is, it, is she banished? Did she move on? So this is Go So Hyang. This is a picture. Uh, she has already moved on. She has moved on to her next uh, phase of life where she has mm. taken up on. So just do your your new moon full moon uh, respect to her and everything and uh, her blessings will be there it's best that we do not disturb the one who have gone but we always give our respect to uh, get their blessings that is important mm. even though it's our family and we feel uh, pain that they have left but everyone has to go one day you know mm. it's a journey uh, mm. so we have to accept some things at it, uh, mm. the reality of life and mm. um, just because that they are our relative in some ways that we are holding them back, it will mm. create more problem for the soul because they are not able to yes. move on. You know, mm. so, but from what I'm getting is uh, she has moved on to her next phase of life. So, mm. Mm. so I got a question for you, uh, Guru. So I'm trying to understand this, right? Like, so our ancestors come to our life, they bless us and then they move on and they reincarnate or they go somewhere else. How does their blessing still work? Uh, if they have really moved on, how can then things like uh, Qing Ming or paying tribute to the ancestor still make sense? So that, are we burning for nobody then since they have moved on? It's all about manifestation of the mind again. It's mm. when we are putting our mind together so strongly, we are channeling the energy to them wherever they are. And we may not realize that we are receiving something from our our past that mm. someone mm. maybe my son in my past life is doing some rituals for me and we will not realize it but if you are able to tune in we will understand the way that we live and everything that we are moving comfortably that we understand mm. that we are receiving this blessing in some ways ah. and mm. our blessings that we receive are the energies in us also transmit back a certain blessing mm. so it works naturally 
without mm. our mm. mind working on it, it works naturally in, in that way. Mm. In that in that case, should we then perhaps all of us look at our past life regression, and I'm I'm just I'm just thinking how to to crack this code right. So I I'm probably an ancestor of someone's family. Mm. I'm I'm now reborn into this handsome looking body, mm. right? And if I know my past life regression and I can see who my family were, could I not go back in this life to the my my new generation and says, "Hey, don't forget your akong, go and give him prayer." <laughs> so through that, they respect their ancestor. I then receive it if in this life. If your past life, if you are akong, is okay. If your past life, you are a cockroach. Then how? You want to go talk to? Who? <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> knowing, your, <laughs> knowing, your, knowing your karma, yeah. Yeah, sure, karma you will sure. never know. So don't go touch on our past. As long we we are moving, a uh, sailing smooth sail in our life yeah. and everything, mm. and uh, we are doing our prayers for our ancestors also. So in this way, mm. the energy is just. Works on his own. Okay. Mm, you know? mm, mm. Well, there's a lot of questions coming in, John. You do the honors. <laughs> wow, so, so many, John, so while you read again. the uh, questions, I'm just going to go for a short advertisement break. Okay. Wow. Choose questions. Come. Thank you for listening to the Supernatural Confessions podcast. If you are enjoying the show and would like to support our efforts, you can help by giving us a five star review or by becoming a patron by signing up for a monthly membership fee that starts from as low as five dollars. Check out the perks at patreon.com slash supernatural confessions. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash supernatural confessions. Or if you feel like showing a simple gesture of appreciation, you can buy us a cup of coffee or two at buymeacoffee.com slash superconfess. And now, let's get back to the show. Summarizing some of the repeated questions, okay, but uh, there are two particular sort of themes here. One is uh, about karma, right? Is there a way to sort of remove bad karma, to sort of reset? With my blessings as an agori from my gurus, because mm. the path of agori is such that we are able to give a certain blessings to cleanse the karma off. Mm. Totally to give a new uh, oh, uh, shed, okay. a new uh, path. For someone, we have done for a number of people, even to wow. some spirits who are wandering and everything. We have that blessing that we are able to give them a moksha. That means to liberate them, to clear off their karma, to give a moksha because of the path wow. that I practice, mm. and my guru's blessings are there. Okay. So it's it's a very unique thing that uh, uh, people may may get confused that you are not able to clear your karma. Yes. Mm. Not a hundred percent thing because your physical karma is there, your mental karma is there. But we are able to cleanse the karma of whatever that is obstructing you, your past life, mm. your your things that is holding you back, or your ancestors' ah, okay. curse that is holding you back. We can reset mm. that because we right. have such a blessings and practices that we have put into all these things. Mm. So that so allows I- us to uh, to change the karma into more positive things and everything. Mm-hmm. So it's like. Clearing out all the stuff in the storeroom. Yes. That's holding you back. But yes. I can't sort. I can't sort out the way you live. That's yes. still your life. Got but it. I can clean your storeroom for you, lah. <laughs> but the wall is still <laughs> the same, lah. You moldy yeah, and everything. You still have to clean, lah. <laughs> yeah, and if the storeroom fills up again, that's because of you, lah. Yes. Right. That's what you're doing with your life, right? Got but it. we can. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. The other question is also a very practical one, right? How can we protect ourselves from um, being cursed? You know, because. You know, clearly a lot of people are being cursed left and right here. So you know, <laughs> it sounds like tonight everybody is being cursed. So how do, everyone's getting a bit scared. How do we protect ourselves? What are some simple things we can do? First of all, why are you receiving curses? Why are people angry with you? Why when people see you or think of you, they want to curse you or to scold curse you for you. one? Because you are carrying those negativity in yourself. Correct or not? Hmm. If that is what you are attracting them. Correct? Like Eugene Lede is so handsome, <laughs> he only attract all the good things because the energy that what we carry. Correct? What about jealous people? Uh, uh, jealous people, that, that, that might curse him. That definitely uh. will come lah because when you are you are good, you are progressing. It's mm. part of our human nature to have this jealousy Correct. and everything. Correct. So <laughs> there are some ways that you can uh, uh, protect. Um, one is by mantra chanting. It's a very powerful. Technique that uh, when you uh-huh. chant specific mantra because mantra is the science of sound. 
So right. understanding the science of sound, how you channel this sound into more mm. vibrational energy to protect yourself, to have mm. a cocoon around you. That is a simple practice. Or another one is someone was asking about Rutraj, uh, the, uh, the seed. Uh, mm. It's another powerful tool that you can also wear to uh, protect yourself. Mm and uh, uh, carrying some talisman and everything. But the most important thing is you have good thoughts, good intention, mm. uh, good attitude towards life and good attitude towards people and everything. Mm. And definitely you will be getting good things towards mm. Right? It's not like in front uh, you talk good and you behind you talk back. Then that is what you're going to receive also. Lah. Mm. Yeah. Lah. So mm, you give what you enough. get. Lah. Yeah. You get what you give. <laughs> <brother>. <laughs> I mean, it. This is this is where spirituality and a lot of uh, I would say modern motivational thinking yes. starts to overlap, right? Because there's so much talk nowadays about just you know sending out love, you know, to to to, to sort of um uh, pay it forward, you know, to be the change that you want to you know you want to see and all that, right? So it's about you being the 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 beginning of transformation, yes, right, and changing both yourself and everything that comes towards you right mm. you know so it's a good it's a good thing i think we're all starting to get on the same wavelength a little mm. bit you know to some it's magic to others it's motivational speaking but yes. it's the same principles right that's quite nice uh thank you julia ismail for your ringgit first, yay first 60 ringgit oh, wow. wow thank, thank you, you. What, does, what does op mean there's a hippo that says op, or, op? Or, or original posture, ocean pacific <laughs> Ocean Pacific. <laughs> Telling of your age, John. <laughs> I heard last time. I heard. Ah. <laughs> ah. Ah, even the OP okay, wallet. Let's see. The... Oh, yeah, yeah. OP wallet. Yeah. Old school, right? Old school, man. I don't know what you're okay. talking about. Ah. <laughs> mm. You last life cockroach. Don't say anything. Okay. Uh, Must be a handsome okay. cockroach. Right? Flying yes. ones. <laughs> okay, Jason <laughs> Lim wants to ask: uh, Can black magic be dispelled solely through uh, chanting and spells? What about symbolic items? Um, uh, are there certain sort of uh, symbolic items that people can hold, or you know, to protect them? You must understand the uh, the tremendous effort a black magic practitioner is putting into creating a mm. ritual for you. Right. You know, it is just not, he's not spending a uh, half an hour of uh, chanting and uh, sending the thing like this, no. Right, right, right. The black magic practitioner is actually putting his life force energy into the spell mm. or the magic to make mm. sure that it, it has effects, 100% right. that it will bring you down. Mm. And you want to protect yourself <laughs> against this with just uh, something very small <laughs> thing. Oops. It doesn't work. <laughs> right. <laughs> Basically, it doesn't work. Mm. You know? Okay, so that's a very interesting uh, view of it, right? Understanding the scale yes. right, of what's coming towards you versus what you think you are trying to use to protect Yes. Yourself. So you, you want to protect yourself, it has to be an everyday practice that you put. Whether it is mm. coming or it's not coming, every day you are channeling, every day you are chanting, every day you are putting your spiritual practice into some use, you mm. are gaining that energy. Then it becomes ah. part of you. Then you have that energy and the strength to protect yourself against all these things. So what I mm. understand and what I learned as well is that everybody has an energy reserve in their body. Um, mm. Like what? Is that a kundalini or is it a separate thing? Just the body structure is the same. The energy flow is the same. So, mm. so if you keep doing the mantra, keep meditating, it's the same thing as you every day eat vitamins, you eat good food, you have a healthy diet. Your body mm. generally will be more resilient against mm. any illness. Mm. You don't right. just uh, eat don't work out <laughs> anyhow, lazy, then, oh, now I get sick and I, I pop yes. at the door and hope for, hope for the best, right? Nothing is going to work. Yeah. Right. So, we're not, we're, so it's, it's better not to count on like react, reactive medicine, but rather, you know, sort of maintaining a healthy regime of yes. energy, mm. la, right? Protecting yes. yourself. That's what protection means. Okay, yeah. very interesting. But so take note, la, everyone. Learn your but mantras. But the most important thing your... is you don't harm anyone. So mm. anyone, someone will not have that idea to harm you back. Mm, mm, don't be the kind of person that yes. people want to curse. Correct. <laughs> yeah. But some interesting okay. questions about um, uh, uh, different generations as well. So mm. uh, even Kwa wants to check, like, if you were to do alms or donations on behalf of the deceased relatives, will mm. they still get the merits if you dedicate the merits to them, even if they have moved on? So I think the answer to that is yes. Um, what your generation do for you will still pass on to to your new life, and then that reflects back onto them as well. Um, RSVP by Grace asks, what if your past <laughs> life you were a chicken? This life you love to eat fried chicken in KFC. 
hope we don't go back into that cycle of the chicken again and uh, we move on to be better human beings. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, thank you PL Lin for your contribution. Um there's a very cute there's a very cute icon there. Okay, with the blue hair. Okay, and also thank you to Nicole Cup for okay, wow. and hers comes with a question. Uh, also her first super chat. Okay. She says, "Hi Guru, want to ask if you are able to tell if someone is affected by black magic only by seeing one's picture." Thanks for this live. Okay. Thanks. You think from seeing the picture? Some sometimes I think I look at my friend's Instagram. I'm like, oh, you cannot black What's magic, that? you know? But <laughs> it's just bad make. It's just I, bad makeup. I need to uh, see the picture because there are memory imprints in them that uh, mm. will tell me. So mm. a picture uh, is definitely important because I can imagine a lot of things, but a picture it has mm. that energy of yours that is being carried there, and I can right. understand and can pick up the uh, information from there. Mm. So yeah. so so you 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 can you can diagnose to some extent, but yes. you cannot actually contact and uh, deal with it until you meet the person. Yeah, right. But the diagnosis maybe yeah. Yeah. So I just mm. want to advise you guys that like, you know if you are sending in photos, the best way for us <laughs> is look at your energy to send nudes. Right. That's what I mean. Yeah. So there there must be no clothing uh, obstructing <laughs> your energy. <laughs> right. Uh. <laughs> oh my. Uh, brightly lit, brightly lit nudes. Okay, this is I think it's quite an important uh, conversation to to handle because it's one of the questions I had in my mind as well in the early mm. days. Guru Murali, if we are from a different religion and seek your help, will mm. it clash spiritually with <clears throat> whatever religion uh, affiliation that they are from? Religion mm. practice and spiritual practice both are two different things. Mm. Right, religion practice. You have your doctrines, you have your borders, you have your parameters that you have to follow and everything. Whereas spirituality is, it's beyond everything. It is about understanding and working on yourself and elements around you. Mm. So it's two different things. So there, there will not be any um, uh, clash. The the deities are not going to come down and ask you why you go and help her. Why am I helping <laughs> him? They are not. It is the human mind will be thinking. Is the deities, the gods are going to be angry? They are not going to be angry. Mm. Don't worry. Mm. They have all made peace with each other. It's only the human are creating oh. a problem with all these things. Okay. <laughs> I, I like that. I love that answer. Uh, and I think this reminds me of one of the confessions that we had, John. Remember, uh, it really stuck, struck a chord with me. Mm. Where it was, I believe it was a the confessor was Christian or Catholic, and mm. he went on to get help from another religion. But in mm. his mind, as he explained it to me, it's like it was. His God, who hmm. brought help from outside Correct. to him, so yeah. it's all about perspective. Yes. It's not like oh, I I defect from my God. I no more loyalty. I go to someone else. In his hmm. worldview, no, yeah. that guru who came to to help me was sent by my God. Hmm. Right. It works out for him, right? Yes. And right. sometimes I'm uh, when I I was working with these a uh, few uh, Western people and everything, hmm. I have experience of a uh, archangel Michael. Hmm. His presence hmm. was there. Was mm. also helping me out when I was doing a uh, certain cases ah. and everything. So, so this shows that the deities and the uh, guardian angels and everything they are okay. Mm. It is just mm. the human being have a lot of confusion over religion and spirituality practices. But mm. we have to understand that the energies are there to protect us and guide us and everything. Mm. Okay, uh, here's a very uh, practical one. Um, Frankie is asking: Does burning aromatherapy incense sticks? Attract unwanted spirits into my life. Mm. Aroma therapy <laughs> incense sticks is actually a therapy <laughs> to help you to relax. <laughs> But uh, you have to understand the fragrance of what you are burning. There are some mm. fragrance that attracts uh, ah. other other friends from other dimension because they like that fragrance. So you have to choose carefully the fragrance that you are getting. So no frangy penny. Yeah, uh, jasmine, <laughs> frangy penny. Uh, uh, I got sandalwood. Ah, uh, sandalwood is still okay. Sandalwood is good, right? Mm, floral yeah. is usually good. Which one? Floral, floral. Yes, but floral you have to be careful of what type of floral. Uh, if general ah. floral is still okay, but specific one like jasmine, um, mm. it it does attract some things because the ah, flowers okay. and the fragrance it has some mm. uh, connection with the uh, other side. The, you you the like jasmine used for deity, right? Uh, also spirits, spirits, also the uh, dark side, okay. the energies, uh, kaka, huh. uh, mm. p, yes. uh, miss p, mm. the mohini, and everything. Mm. We also use them uh, to uh, as offering and everything. Okay, so don't don't burn jasmine, don't burn frangipani, yes. burn fr sandalwood. <laughs> sandalwood is good. Okay. Sandalwood, yeah. 
So if one person drink jasmine green tea a lot, then uh, then you, they nasty. will have the uh, the flower smell, and they will have a lot of uh, uh, friends. That <laughs> really, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was just kidding. Ah, uh. <laughs> 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 really all like, the spirits <laughs> will go into your stomach. Yes, <laughs> that's, that's where it went. Yeah, <laughs> the spirit well, that goes uh, into the stomach. <laughs> what about lavender? What about lavender incense sticks? Lavender is soothing. It's calm. Uh, mm. It has the effect of uh, calming you down. You see, what mm. is the attraction here of the negativity is low vibrations of your physicality. The mm. aroma, yes, it causes a certain uh, impact. Right. But it's your vibration of what you are carrying that is creating more, that is pulling in mm. those things. Ah, okay, okay. Mm. Okay. So you are making it worse, lah. Yes. Right. Mm. Okay. Since we're talking about incense sticks and all that, mm. hey, guess what? We got Palo Santo sticks <laughs> for purchase uh, on a YouTube channel. We have a storefront, so if you want to get your Palo Santo sticks, uh, do let us know, or you can just get me get in touch with me nine four five nine four nine three one. I personally use Palo Santo stick for cleansing, and also it smells really good, and I feel really comfortable doing it. For so, uh, have you heard of this one, Palo Santo it's yes. from Peru? Any, any thoughts of it? Oh, it's good. Uh, it's used uh, more by the uh, the uh, Native Americans uh, and the uh, the mm. shaman practice and everything because uh, they have understood the uh, plants and the nature that how they can use these things to enhance their um, themselves and their life and their space and everything. So it's a good thing mm. Mm. because now what you can see the trending market is the Westerners are getting uh, spiritual stuff from the East. Whatever yes. that we are using, the uh, Chinese salesman, the paper, the uh, yes, Thai yes. omelet, they are being brought over to the West, and now mm. we are bringing all the uh, Western uh, <laughs> spiritual stuff to the East. So it's a beautiful exchange of uh, spirituality uh, things that is ongoing. Yeah. But it's a good stuff. I've tried that. It's a good stuff. Uh, okay, okay so thank you, Jason Lim, for your generous donation. Is there a joke saying... to go along with that? No, he's oh. saying, Guru Morali, your teachings have been a source of inspiration and enlightenment for me. I'm immensely grateful for the knowledge and wisdom you have shared. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> okay, here's a very interesting question. So someone is asking, um, what will happen if a person got cleansed by uh, Hinduism, Christianity and Buddhism within one week? That means one wow. problem, go to three different masters mm. <laughs> in one week. That means the problem is not solved. <laughs> 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 you see, if you have a problem... Do not go uh, find, uh, uh, identify practices because of their religious practice. Mm. Identif there are people who do not uh, identify themselves with a certain religion, but they have the ability to solve your problem. Right. So that is the most important thing. So identify people uh, or the person who have this ability or the knowledge to solve your mm. problem, not by the religious practice and everything, because religious mm. has a lot of... Uh, uh, Restricts and yes. the knowledge yes. of a uh, cleansing work or the knowledge of helping you out is not there because they are <laughs> more right. of uh, teachings of uh, practices for you to go to another mm. dimension after you die. So that is a totally Correct. different thing. Correct. Mm. Very yeah. true. Very true. Ha have there been like a cross, uh, cross, you know, like two different guru coming together to work on a case? Yes. Uh, I think sometime far back, I had a, I think many many years ago, I had a case of a. Um, Things were moving in the house and mm. the poltergeist case. Oh. The ah, first time okay. I was experiencing a poltergeist case in Singapore where oh. the, uh, the daughter, uh, she actually uh, accidentally stepped onto a portal and uh, she had brought back something into the house. Ayo. Okay. And uh, it was the first time I was experiencing things were flying, a cup was flying, plate, plate was flying, paper was moving around and I could see mm. a dark entity was moving up and down and everything. So I had uh, another master's help uh, mm. Because this was very very strong, and uh, we mm. were working together on on this to mm. solve. Oh, this is like the MSA, the Ministry of Supernatural. Affairs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, but sometimes when I encounter some cases which I'm I'm not very familiar and everything, I do seek help of uh, other gurus mm. to understand of uh, uh, the other techniques that they could have. You know, because there are techniques that we will not understand and we, even we understand where they are not is, but we will not understand mm. how to untie them. So we need to, right. to get uh, help from other people, mm. other gurus to, mm. to get the advice. I love this. Mm. I love this. I really love this crossover. <laughs> uh, Guru, we have a message from Nicole. Just now Nicole was asking a question. Uh, it says, um, Hi Eugene, I'm the person who asks whether the guru can tell if someone is affected by black magic from a picture. Uh, why I'm asking this is I suspect my younger sister is affected by black magic. 
for the past two years. The doctors cannot find anything wrong with her, but her physical state and mental state is becoming worse and worse. We have been to different priests and energy healers, and they told us the negative energy is very strong. This is the picture of the sister. Could you connect to it? This looks like most probably uh, 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 spirits from their ancestors' curse has been passed down to them. Like what I was mm. explaining earlier about curses from their generation is everything that is affecting them. Mm. So maybe you can check with her whether her, her dream patterns and everything, on not only her sister but family, uh, girls in their family, uh, mm. beside these two, are also being affected uh, who have similar patterns of this mm. and everything. Mm. Okay, Nicole, I hope you get your answer. If not, well, you got my number now. You can WhatsApp me and we can take this uh, the discussion further mm. further in depth. Where oh, is she from? Here? Where are you from? Plus Where are you from, Nicole? Plus four. Mm. Plus four, I'm not sure. Not sure. Okay. Yeah, if, you, if you're in Singapore, then we can just arrange for you to pass by Tampines <laughs> and then... <laughs> Hang out at the at the train <coughs> station, then Guru oh, Murali will walk past your sister. Switzerland, uh, so it's, it's Switzerland. Switzerland a bit harder, a bit yeah. harder. So you don't have black magic in Switzerland. It's all over the world. <laughs> all over the world. Gosh. <laughs> oh my goodness! It's eleven thirty already, John. Are we? Okay. Are we good for time? Do you think we can have a few? I more think questions? okay. A couple. Okay. Uh, give them a few more minutes. Yes. Yeah. I think this, you know. Uh, any other questions that you are burning to ask? Please shoot them across now. Right. This is a wonderful opportunity. Okay, I'm uh, learning so much today. I mean, today we got since Gurali Guru Gurali <laughs> Guru. <laughs> Gura <laughs> that's, that's your short. That's your short form. Now, Gurali. Gurali. Uh, DJ Gurali. We will. We will extend today's show perhaps fifteen more minutes for uh, right mm. now as an AMA session and any questions that you have uh, really mm. if you see anything that pops up today you like let us know we'll no. be mm. John okay, as well Jason Lim has heard your request and sent a joke so Eugene will you please <laughs> read the joke <laughs> yeah. okay. okay you don't read that huh? I read out to you huh? okay. Okay, yeah, I don't read, I don't read. Okay, what come. did the Guru Murali say to the black magic practitioner who couldn't make his spells work oh. I would wow, usually I would not uh, clash with them because it's uh, a <laughs> It's the wrong move. So mm. uh, even though they are uh, doing the black magic and everything, I will still uh, respect them because of mm. what they are doing. Because the more you have, you know, that you want to clash with them, then you are just finding your own trouble. Lah. Correct. So Correct. Just, okay. So that's the, that's the, warn the them, diplomatic. Say, don't do all these things. That's a diplomatic, diplomatic answer. answer. Yes. The okay. Jason Lim answer. <laughs> that joke Jason Lim answer is, Looks like you need a little more Abracadabra <laughs> and a little less Alakazam. <laughs> and then that guy will be getting more things to uh, to come behind me. Uh, uh, back and forth, back and forth. Yes. Uh, <laughs> okay, come on. Okay, a few questions have come up. Okay, okay. go ahead, John. Read up. Right, okay. Uh, oh, this is interesting. Hi, Guru. Understand that you're an Agori and the main deity you pray to is... Uh, Eh? Oh, it's, it's Bairava. Bairava? Bairava, okay. Can you shed some light about him and explain how to pray and meditate to him to bring transformation? Bairava means, mm. uh, Karl Bairav actually means the uh, time, the control of time. Ah, so, okay. uh, why in the Agori traditions that we connect with Bairava is because that we are able to flow with the time and understand time and to, to break away from the cycle of time. Mm. So that is why mm. we have uh, connect with this uh, specific energy, Bhairava or Bhairavi, the female version of it. Mm. And um, you can generally go to a temple to uh, pray and uh, on a specific dates like the Ashtami. Uh, that means on the eighth day from the uh, new moon or the eighth day from the full moon is the auspicious mm. time that uh, you can go to the uh, connect with Bhairava because that is his, his time of energy for you to work with and everything. Mm. Okay. On, on meditation, you can just chant the uh, Gayatri Mantra that uh, is there. Unless you have a guru who has mm. the initiation of the uh, the Bhairava, then you can get a specific proper practice of uh, mantras. If not, you can just mm. go on a Gayatri Mantra because there are deities and energies that you need a proper guru to explain to you the, uh, the significance of it because such energies can change your life into positive or if you do not know how to handle them you can mm. change it upside down so that is why I you need see. to have a guidance when you are mm. connecting with all these things mm. okay. hope that answers you mm. okay okay that's a good one um someone's asking how can you tell if someone is suffering from a curse or black magic or just purely mental issues 
there's a certain gift that I have, which my gurus give that uh, when we are observing someone and I communicate with my gurus and I communicate with my uh, energies and they mm. tell me the message. And uh, not only that, I will also ask them a lot of questions to see, to have a better understanding for them and for, for us, for me. To, mm. to see where they're actually falling into all these things. If there's a spirit that is being uh, lingering around them, I will definitely pick up that mm. thing. So, so some things cannot miss the eyes, you know. Mm. You no, know, I do all this, this ghostly thing, right? Is mm. there any negative things following me or in this room or in my house? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Clean bill of health. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> okay, uh, this is interesting. Uh, 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 sharing actually. So she is saying just to share the importance of space cleansing. Many years ago, I was smudging with white sage at an ex gynae clinic. While smudging, my friend heard baby cries following her out of the main door. Home. Oh. Mm, so effective, huh? yes, effective. It is, it is effective. Mm, okay, very the good. The most very important good. thing is whatever spiritual practice that you're using, it is your manifestation of your mind that you're applying into all these things and then it works. Mm. So making a mani manifestation, uh, there's a question here that says, tell us about the power behind visualization. Is it just I visualize and it works? Which, where do we draw a line between I visualize and therefore I imagine and make up stuff in my head versus I visualize and therefore is effective. Hmm. You visualize to make it effective, but you're not visualizing to create a fantasy out of it. You mm. Know? Mm. Your power of the mind is such that you can create a lot of fantasy things that you want, but you have to understand that what at that point of aspect that you are searching for and everything. Mm. And then you mm. visualize and you manifest according to that for the situation and everything. Mm. Then it works. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> Got a so, comment from Hensley Tama. <laughs> we are in the Star Wars, Wars universe. universe. Technology and force. Side, technology <laughs> and force side by side. Guru Murali is the Jedi. <laughs> That's cute. Thank you very much, uh, Hensley. <clears throat> uh, someone was asking how long I will be in Singapore. And, uh, I don't have a temple here in Singapore. Uh, I have shifted now to uh, South India because it's uh, way much cheaper. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the cost of rent and everything. So my both my ashram, I have two ashram in uh, South India, one in the Koli Hills and one in uh, Tiruvannamalai in the South. And uh, this is where I'm putting uh, more into practice of my charity work and my spiritual work is there. Uh, I will be here for another, till the uh, mid of May. And uh, you can contact Eugene uh, regarding anything we can discuss and see how we can best mm. help to... Uh, work with you on your your things and everything. Or you can all go down to his uh, Kolei Hills ashram and go and let the wipe on, wipe off. <laughs> <laughs> you can come for an experience to the uh, hill station in the south. It's very beautiful to mm. practice, meditate, explore, waterfalls, nature mm. and everything. Uh, year end, we are going up to Varnasi to experience the uh, uh, <clears throat> meditation by the uh, cremation ground, the Mahasmashan in Varnasi. So I will put into proper practice and everything there where you will be able to sit by the uh, cremation ground to experience first-hand meditation by the, uh, the Agori way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, got, I got this uh, interesting question uh, from Tel Fal Goran. Remember the last time we went to Stefan's house? Mm -hmm. uh, and we did a video on that. I think what they're asking for is some comment on that particular video. What was the most interesting stuff you found in the Occult Museum video? I think it's the doll <coughs> that was very fascinating. The doll was pretty good. It's uh, I forgot the name of the doll. The you know. Indonesian one, right? Yes, yes. Mm. It has very uh, uh, very interesting energy. Uh, it's very mild, soft, and at the same time, it can just change itself into something else, very fiery and everything. And mm. it's like like a flow, like a dance kind of a thing. And uh, it's very beautiful to study all these uh, practices all around. Uh, uh, where we, where we are from Asia from all around the world and everything, how uh, powerful the human mind is to understand energies and how we are able to transform all these things into uh, for our own benefit and uh, and to harm someone else also, and if you are able to come together to understand all these things and channel this energy for an enhancement of human together, I think it will be very beautiful, mm. you know. Well, they have a comment, not so much a question, but it says, mm. 
Uh, this is from Wend in London. Mm. Guru Murali, you remind me of my own Nepali guru who sadly died saving lives when the pandemic hit Kathmandu. Your humor, humility, light and wisdom is much appreciated. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, John, no wonder I can't hear you the whole time. Why? I think you need to reboot. How come John's so quiet? Tiabo, Tiabo. You have to re refresh, maybe? It's not like, eh? So quiet, my Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he was talking. He was talking, is it? He was talking. No, 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 no. Oh, no, I couldn't hear. Oh, no, no. Can you guys hear John? Or is it just us? I asked him to reset. Maybe it's not him. Maybe the problem. John? Uh, can you hear yes. me now? This is the problem. You <laughs> <laughs> the cat. Oh, okay. Hey. 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 <laughs> Hello. Okay, Hello. So, sorry, John. You were talking the whole time. I really couldn't hear because I think for no, no. I was, I was also sharing uh, when in London's message. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so any final messages for the guru while he's here? Um, but while he's here for a few more weeks, do get in touch if you have something urgent that you need advice on. Mm. Get in touch with uh, the usual. Uh, toilet stall number. <laughs> the toilet stall number is <laughs> plus six five nine four five nine four nine three one. Remember, hmm. send nudes. <laughs> <laughs> you will study very carefully. You will meditate, <laughs> meditate for hours. <laughs> All right. So once again, if you guys uh, want to see uh, Guru next Sunday, is actually a good time. We are doing a pancha kosha cleansing. So that's happening on the 28th, 9.30 a.m. Uh, otherwise, if you have any other issues, text me. Uh, but when you're texting me, please let me know what the issues you're facing, uh, what it is that uh, help that you need, because I will have to relay all this to him. I, uh, you cannot just say, I need help, I'll talk to him, then I connect you guys. It doesn't work <laughs> yes. that way. If everyone does that, you are very busy already. Mm. Yeah, mm. So I will... Uh, I, I will I'm, I'm at the polyclinic, la. you get referral, yeah, right? Eugene's the nurse. You must <laughs> describe your symptoms to the nurse first, okay? Uh, I like referral letter, <laughs> now I can go. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, oh, yeah. any any last things, last words, last questions? Mm, I suspect, Guru, you're going to be very busy after tonight. <laughs> the questions will come fast and furious, I tell you. It is a sure. blessing that I'm, uh, I'm able to help as much mm. as possible. So... Uh, Make use of this opportunity. Since mm. I'm here, we can uh, discuss about ideas, discuss about uh, practices, uh, mm. not only about your issues, but I'm also open to uh, to learn more things also from you and everything. Mm. And uh, sharing of what uh, SC you guys are doing is uh, has really helped many people all over the world because I've get calls from uh, from the states, from Africa, mm. from a lot of places around Mexico because of uh, SC's channel. So. This mm. has been a great platform which has helped many throughout mm. the world. And uh, <laughs> it's a blessing too. Okay. And we are very grateful to have you with us as well. I mean, what a blessing to have a real guru with such an experience, but also such a willingness to share. Yeah. Right. And such a humility to explain things, you know, uh, and, and to have that, that as part of our community. We are very lucky. Yes. Mm. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Last words, John. Huh? Yeah. Last, Last words. <laughs> I think very the moral for today is just don't be the kind of person that people want to curse. Yes. Mm. <laughs> but then I'll be no job like that. <laughs> so for guru's sake. For guru's, for guru's sake. sake. <laughs> uh, well, I always like to wish you guys uh, the serenity the serenity to accept the things that you cannot change, the courage to change the things that you can, and of course the wisdom to know which is which. Mm. Well, for mm. Friday Night Live, this is Supernatural <laughs> Confessions. My name is Eugene Tay. And Morali. And, and Jonathan. Say good night. I'll see you guys next week. Bye, Bye everyone. Night. <laughs>